in today's class i will talk about tidal energy as well as wave energy from ocean we can get different forms of energy which we can convert it into mechanical energy and thereby convert it into electrical energy so with the help of ocean we can have tidal energy we can have mechanical energy these two forms of energies are available in the form of mechanical energy or potential energy and then we have another form of energy which we call it as ocean thermal energy or otec system where we get energy from the ocean in the form of heat energy so these are the different ways in which we can extract energy from the ocean and convert that into electrical energy or as per our convenient we can convert it into any other form of energy now let us talk about the tidal energy tidal energy is the uh, form of potential energy which occurs or which is caused due to the natural rise and fall of water level in the ocean due to the gravitational action of moon as well as sun since moon is very close to earth surface when compared to the sun the amount of gravitational pull or gravitational force exerted by the moon will be very much higher than that of the sun around 70% of the tidal energy is due to the moon gravitational pull and the remaining 30% is due to the gravitational pull of the sun now let us see how the tides are formed so here you can see that we have earth and earth is covered by the water around 70% of the earth surface is covered by water and the water as is being a fluid it can be pulled or it can be deformed very easily so the moon exerts gravitational pull on the earth in turn it is applying gravitational pull on the water surface or the oceans or due to the gravitational pull of the moon what happens here is the earth being a rigid object being a solid object it cannot deform in the direction of moon but since the water is fluid it can be easily deformed and that creates a pull towards the moon in the same way on the opposite direction also a kind of pull will be created and because of that the water level near as well as on the far end of the earth which is close to moon the water level gradually increases and as the moon rotates and as the earth rotates it gradually reduces so this occurs over a duration of 12 and 1/2 hours or 12 hours 25 minutes to be precise and this occurs and this occurs cyclically over uh, the day so the rise and fall of the water level over the ocean can be captured by constructing an artificial dam and we can store water in the dam when the water level is high or when the water level is increasing in the ocean and as the water level in the ocean reduces we can pass that water through the turbine uh, back to the ocean and we can produce some mechanical energy so here i have a tidal wave pattern so the this is the mean sea level and the water level gradually increases and gradually reduces and this entire cycle we call it as one tidal cycle happens over a period of 12 hours 25 minutes it happens over a period of 12 hours and 25 minutes so here the highest level of water we call it as high tide and the lowest level of water we call it as low tide then the height difference between the high tide and the low tide we call it as range and this range will not be constant throughout the month because the moon is also moving relative to the sun so during certain days the moon and sun will be aligned together during those days the um, range will be very high the height of the high tide will be greater and the depth of the low tide will be lower than the normal days now let us see the variation of tide with respect to the different phases of moon so here in the top diagram we have full moon day as well as new moon day during these days the moon sun as well as the earth will be aligned together and on those days the gravitational pull offered by the moon as well as the sun will be added up together 
and that creates a larger gravitational pull on the waters of the ocean. So that causes a larger increase in the height of the tide and at these regions there will be low tide and since a larger amount of water has been pulled away so here the low tide will be at a much lower level than the normal level and when it comes so these kind of uh, tides we call them as spring tides which happens every 15 days once during the first quarter and the third quarter of the moon the moon earth and sun all are perpendicular to each other on a two dimensional plane so when they are perpendicular to each other the force exerted by the moon and the force exerted by the sun are out of phase and because of that the high tide as well as the low tide will have a very minimum range so this variation occurs twice a month and that happens in the form of uh, a tire variation in the tidal range so if i consider this as the mean sea position or mean sea level then during the full moon day as well as during the new moon day the range will be very high and as we come towards the first and the third quarter the range will reduce and then gradually as we move towards the next new moon or full moon the range increases now let us see how to extract energy from this tide so here we have a schematic of the tidal energy extraction system what we do is nearer to the show where the tidal range is more than around 5 meters so there those are the suitable sites to construct the tidal energy extraction systems so in those kind of places what we do is we build a dam or a barrage so this is the ocean so this is the floor of the ocean this entire region is the ocean so across the ocean at a suitable place where we have a very narrow opening we create a dam or a barrage if there is no narrow opening and a large pool of body to store water we have to artificially create a space where we can store water and then we need to create this dam once we construct this dam we provide pathways for water to flow into the dam and out of the dam or into the basin and out of the basin so this is the basin where the water will be collected during high tide and from this basin the water will be discharged during the low tide so here you can see that this is the height of water during the high tide and water enters in this particular basin the water enters through the sluice gate through the sluice way uh, this gate is made to open automatically when the water level reaches this channel height so once the water level reaches this the water pushes the gate and the gate swings open then the water gets collected in this tank and as the water level starts to reduce in the ocean due to the action of gravity the gate will close and stop water from flowing out of this path once the water is suffi stored sufficiently in the basin and the ocean level reaches the low tide level then the water will be allowed to flow out of this through the turbines so at the bottom we, ha we have turbines so the water is made to flow through the turbine and produce mechanical energy so this mechanical energy can be given to a generator which produces electrical energy so this is the principle which we are going to use to construct which we are going to use to extract energy from the tides now let us see the different schemes which we have or different methods through which we can extract energy from the tides so there are basically five ways in which we can extract energy or five different arrangements or schemes through which we can extract energy from the tide the first one is the single basin single effect scheme so in this case we have one basin and the production of electricity or conversion of the energy potential energy of water stored in the basin to mechanical energy happens only during high tide or low tide 
okay it's a single basin as the name as the name indicates it is a single basin and single effect only during entry to the basin or to the egg uh, during the exit from the basin we produce mechanical energy then we have single basin double effect scheme in this case what we do is we have a single basin but when allowing water to fill the basin or when as well as when the water is coming out of the basin we extract mechanical energy from the flowing water so that is the double effect then we have two basin linked basin so if you have a sufficiently high tidal range and if the place or the region permits us to have two different basins at two different levels then we go for two basin linked basin scheme and this is more advantageous than the single basin schemes because the electricity can be continuously generated uh, with the help of two basin system but with the help of single basin system the electricity production is intermittent then we have two basin paired basin so here we, if the site permits us to have two basins at same level then what we can do is we can go instead of having a single basin we can have a two basin paired basin system and then we have tidal flow or tidal current scheme where uh, we don't have to have a basin if there is a narrow channel through which the tidal in a tidal wave is moving or the tide has to uh, move then we can install a turbine and we can produce tidal energy we can produce mechanical energy with the help of that which we call it as tidal flow or tidal current scheme so here uh, we will be we will be studying about the single basin single effect as well as double effect scheme as well as two basin link basin and two basin paired basin schemes in this class now here we have the schematic of a single basin single effect scheme so here uh, i'll explain in detail when the power generation is taking place and when uh, the system is idle or no power generation is taking place in detail the same principle will be applicable for other schemes so for the other schemes we will just study the schematic we will not go in depth into the uh, power production cycle so here uh, we have the ocean and we have a favorable site where we have a narrow stretch and then we have a basin or uh, we have a portion of the ocean which is separated by the uh, main ocean by a narrow strip of water so in these kind of cases what we can do is we can construct a dam or a barrage like this so here this line represents the dam so we have constructed a dam and then here we have the sluice way through which the water enters and leaves the basin and then we have the power plant the power plant is nothing but the place where you are going to place the turbine and generator set so in a power plant the turbine generator set will be installed through that the water will flow and produce electrical energy so here if you see this diagram this is the variation of the tidal level okay and we have shown what is happening uh, when the gate is opening and when the gate is closed in this or uh, when the generation is taking place in this diagram so here when the water is being admitted into the basin we call that time duration as charging and when the water is flowing out of the basin we call it as discharging in this scheme what we are doing is we are producing energy during the low tide so this kind of cycle we call it as ebb cycle and we can produce the same energy during the flooding of the basin that we call it as flood cycle okay in the single basin single effect either we will have ebb cycle or we will have flood cycle but in the case of single basin double effect scheme we have combination of ebb as well as flood cycle so the power production duration will be increased in the double basin double effect scheme so here you can see that uh, since this is ebb cycle the power generation takes place when the ocean level is low or during the low tide so during high tide we fill the basin so that's why we have shown the filling here and then once the basin is filled we close the sluice gate so this gate will be closed and we need to wait 
for certain amount of time because the water level has to reduce in the ocean so, so that there is a considerable height difference between the basin and the ocean. At least we need to have 2 to 3 meters of height difference to extract mechanical energy efficiently from the low head turbines which we use in the tidal energy systems. So we have to wait for certain duration of time. Once there is a favorable height difference between the water level in the basin and in the ocean then what we can do is we can open the gates for the turbine. So here there will be a gate we have to open that gate and we allow water to flow out of the basin through the turbine. So as the water flows out of the basin through the turbine we can produce electrical energy and you can see here that after reaching the lowest point again the generation is continuing till a certain height is reached. So if the low tide is somewhere here you can see that is the low tide level and we can continue generation till the water level reaches the turbine level. Once that is reached then we will close the gates of the turbine and we need to wait for certain amount of time the water has to increase from here till the sleeves. So till that we will there will be no flow of water from the basin or to the basin. So once the water level in the ocean reaches the sluice level then the water will start to fill the basin. The same thing will happen but in the opposite manner during the flood tide. During the flood tide so instead of filling generation will be taking place at these two spots and instead of generation here the emptying of the tank or the basin will be happening during the flood tide. 